So far our app is pretty static. So in this part I want to get widget data and change widgets. And for that we have to cover a couple of things. The first part is that there are two major ways to get data from a widget. The first one is called tkinter variables. This is the one you want to use most of the time. Although this one is a tiny bit more advanced, so I'm going to cover it in the next few parts. For now, we're going to use the get method. Lots of widgets have fairly obvious data that the user would want to get. Hence, we have a dedicated method for it. The best example here is the entry widget. If we run the get method on it, it is going to return the text inside of that widget. And that is the easiest way to get data from a widget. So let's play around with that. And once we have that, we can change the widget with that data. All right, once again, I have a completely empty Python file. And the first thing I want to do is to import tkinter as tk. And since I do want to use the nicer widgets, I also want from tkinter import ttk. And once we have that, I want to create a window. This I want to store in a window variable. And this we create with tk and tk. Finally, to see something, I want to run the entire thing. And this I do with window.main loop, like so. And if I run this thing now, we can see we have a basic window that we can work with. On top of that, I also want to change the title, which I do with window.title. This I called getting and setting widgets. Let me run this again. And you can see we have a much better title. So with that, I want to create some widgets that we can work with. I want to create a label. I want to create an entry widget and I want to create a button. And this could already be a pretty good exercise for you. See if you can remember what was done in the last part and create the label, an entry and a button and see if you can figure this one out. All right, let's get started by creating a label and this we get with TTK and label. Once again, we need a master and this is going to be the window. For the content or the text of this widget, I want to set some text. It doesn't really matter what it is, just choose whatever you want in here. Finally, I want label.pack. This is going to be the label. Besides that, we have the entry, which we're getting with TTK and entry. In here, we just need a master, so I can copy from the label and paste it in here. And finally, I want entry.pack. For the button, we need ttk.button, the master once again, and we need a text, and this could be the button. To show the button, I want to pack the button. And with that, we have the three widgets. Let me run the code. And this is looking pretty good. I have some text, I can write something in the entry, and I can press the button. So this is working really well. Now, what I want to do is when I'm pressing the button, I want to add a command, and this is going to be the button function. Inside of this button function, whenever I press the button, I want to get the content of the entry widget. So let's create that function. For that, all the way at the top, I want to have a button function. It doesn't need any arguments. And in here, I want to get the content of the entry, this entry here. So how can I get that? And for that, we have the get method. All we really need is entry.get. This is going to return the content of the entry widget. So if I print it, I can run the entire thing again. And now if I press the button, nothing happens. The reason for that is that nothing is inside of this widget. But if I write some text and print and press on the button again, we get, if I write some text, whatever I've just written. This works with literally any kind of text. And now if I press the button without any content, you can see we have an empty line. So this is working just fine. This get method here for a couple of widgets is the easiest way to get the information. However, you do have to be really careful here because lots of widgets do not have a get method. The label, for example, doesn't have such a method. So if I run label 
and press on the button, we're getting an error. The error being that label object has no attribute get. So this would not work here. I gotta change it back to entry because this is the only one that really works amongst all of the widgets that we have right now. So with that, we can work on the next part and that is to change widgets. Let's talk about that bit. Every single widget in tkinter has a config method and this is what you're using to update the method, at least in a very basic way. For example, inside of the label, we can use the config method to update the text. This one should be fairly straightforward. And since this is so simple, there's a shorthand in tkinter. This one looks like that. We are getting the widget and then kind of like indexing, we are passing in a named argument. In this case, text, the same text we have used up here. And then we can assign whatever new value we want to assign to it. The same thing we have done up here. Both of these methods are identical. You can basically choose whatever you prefer. So let's play around with them. Back in the code, whenever I'm pressing this button here, I also want to update this label. For that, let me add another comment here, update the label. I want to get my label and I want to run the config method. Inside of this, I want to change the text of the label. And this, let's for now go with some other text. That is all we need. Let me run this entire thing. And now if I press on the button, we get some other text. So this is all we need here. Now, what you do see fairly often is that some people use config, other people use configure. The result is going to be the same. So if I press on the button again, we get also some other text. Right now, both are working just fine, but I think at some point config is going to be removed. So you probably want to use configure most of the time. That being said, this kind of thing here is not really what you would want to use. Instead, you would go with label and then text, and then you can assign the new value. So in here, I can set some other text and comment out the line we have just created and run the entire thing again. And now if I press on the button, we are getting the same result, which means those two lines here are equivalent. They do the same thing. And since this one here is a bit more concise, I think this is what you would want to use. But once again, it really doesn't matter, whatever you prefer. And now that we do have that, we can connect updating the label and getting the content of the entry widget. So what I want to do is I want to update the label to whatever text is inside of the entry widget. And for that, I don't want to print the entry widget. So let me get rid of the print statement here. Instead, I want to save the content, let's call it entry text, as another variable. And the value here is just going to be a string. And this string I want to use down here for my label. And this should be all I need. If I run the entire thing again, I can print a new label. And now if I press on the button, we get a new label. This also works multiple times. So some other text, I press the button, we're getting some other text. With that, you can get information from a widget and you can update an existing widget. And that is basically all you have to know for the basics. Although for now, this is quite limited. I guess what I could be covering is that besides the text, there are quite a few attributes that you could target. For example, what you could do is you can get the entry and there is the state. The state determines if the widget is enabled or disabled. If I left it like this, after I press the button, the entry widget would not work anymore. Let me actually try. If I now write in here, let's just call it test, and I press the button, the entry widget is going to be disabled, which means I, even if I click on it, nothing is going to happen. Although we did update the label, so it is still working, but after we're pressing the button, it is disabled. If you want to know all of the possible things you can do with a widget, all you have to do is call the widget you want to look at, and then the config, let's call it configure method, without any arguments. This is going to return all of the options. If you print that, you get what is being returned. 
So let me press on the button and close and expand this a tiny bit. In here, you can see all of the options you can work with. For example, I have used the text and I have also used the state. If I can find it really quick down here. So text and state. And well, there are quite a few more. Throughout this entire series, I'm going to cover basically all of them. For now, don't worry too much about them. I'm going to comment out this part to not make it confusing. And that was quite a bit of information. So let's do one more exercise and then we can finish this part. What I want you guys to do is to add another button that changes the text back to some text, the one that we have seen in the original. On top of that, after the button was pressed, the entry widget should be enabled again. When we are pressing this button here, the entry widget is disabled. When we are pressing the other button, the one you are going to create, it should be enabled again. And pause the video now and try to add this new button with the added functionality and see if you can figure it out. Let me start by adding the exercise button. This is just going to be another TTK dot button with a master being the window. For the text, I just want to add, let's call it the exercise button. Finally, we need a command. And the command, once again, is going to be a function. I'm going to create it right here below the exercise. Let me call this one the reset function. It doesn't need any arguments. And in here, I want to do a couple of things, but they're going to come in a bit. So I'm going to add pass for now. This function I want to call when I press the button. So reset function. And also don't forget, I want to pack the exercise button on the window. If I run the entire thing now, I have another button that I can press, but nothing happens. That is the functionality we can work on now. There are two things we have to cover. Number one, we have to change the text back to some text. Let's work on that. I want to get my label once again. And in here, I want to change the text. And the text I want is some text. That should already reset the label. So let me run it and I can write some other text and press the original button. And there we go. We have some other text. However, now if I press the exercise button, we go back to some text. The problem we have is that the entry widget still doesn't work. That fortunately we can change quite easily. I want to get the entry widget. In here I want to target the state. And this state I want to set to enabled. I can run the entire thing again. I can write whatever I want in here. I can press the button. And now the entry widget is disabled. But if I press the exercise button, we have some text again. And I can work with the entry widget again and write something else. And now once again, if I press the button, we go back to the entry widget disabled and we have updated the label. And this I can do as often as I want. And with that, we have added a fair bit of interactivity to our app. It's not very much, but at the very least, it's a start. Although in the next part, we're going to make all of this significantly more powerful.